camping was a successful, if somewhat disgusting, venture. Uh, I've been camping a lot of times, actually. It's my first time solo camping. Sorry, fellow campers. Uh, yeah, I've been camping a lot of times before in my life. It's nothing new to me, but camping without running water is something that's still relatively new to me. So, in that respect, it's been a little bit difficult and adventurous, but ultimately, I survived. I should say there is running water, but they don't have flush toilets, they don't have sinks. I don't know if the water is actually even potable. Like, I didn't drink any because I was a bit scared of it. I didn't know whether or not it was, was safe to drink. I did use it to brush my teeth and rinse, but uh, it's kind of grossed me out because the running water is actually directly adjacent to the outhouse. They have an outhouse where you literally just like dump your excrement into a hole in the ground and it's kind of gross. I mean, it's better than not having anything. Well, actually, I don't know. I kind of almost feel like having nothing would be better. It'd be cleaner because you don't have to like dump into a place where millions of other humans are dumping their crap and it's just like sitting and festering all in one place. But anyway, I, I made it through that little <coughs> adventure unscathed. Packing up the tent, setting up and packing up the tent was actually a lot easier than I thought. I've actually got out of the campground roughly on schedule. I woke up sort of naturally at 6 a.m., which wasn't something that I expected would happen. I thought I might end up sleeping in by accident. But I got, you know, I woke up at pretty much 6 on the dot, which is nice. And I was packed up and ready to go by 7. <coughs> this little coughing fit has nothing to do with camping. I'm still on the tail end of a little chest cold. I'm glad I got over it in time for the trip. Yeah, I actually woke up with a sore throat, and I was worried that it would have some. It had something to do with my uh, illness, but it was gone by the time I was out of the bathroom. And now I'm feeling good. I'm actually feeling really good. I'm ready to go. Uh, my only concern is the next step for this trip is to fill up with gas and hit the road. And this next section of road is where I'm going to actually hit Big Sur finally. And on Big Sur, in a car, is no big deal because cars, you know, if you fill up in Cambria here, you can fill up and your car will do you know, 250, 300, 400 miles on a tank of gas. My dad's car will get 500 miles out of a single tank. But this thing, not because it gets bad mileage, it gets extremely good mileage, but just because the tank is so small, the maximum I can get out of this thing is around 200, which should get me from here to Monterey, but just to be safe, I'm going to fill up in Cambria, and then I'm going to fill up as often as I can along the way. Well, maybe not as often as I can, but more often than normal, just because, you know, the Big Sur is someplace I really would rather not get stranded, because I don't know how easy it'll be to get help, have somebody bring you gas out there. There's probably not going to be any cell phone reception or anything like that, so this is where the real adventure begins. Actually, I've got a lot of actuallys. I'm a little bit more concerned with what's going to happen in San Francisco because I'm supposed to meet a friend in San Francisco and I'm going to have to stop and adjust my bag because it's crickety. I'll do that at the gas station. But I'm supposed to meet a friend in San Francisco in the sketchiest part of downtown that there is. And I'm going to have to park my motorcycle somewhere down there and I'm not completely convinced it will still be there when I come back. All in all, I think I'll probably be okay. I don't know how big a target this specific bike is, but I'm going to try and park it in a safe place. I'm going to be there in broad daylight hours in a busy part of town, and I've got a disc lock, so hopefully it won't be too bad. This seems like a really cool town to explore given a little bit more free time. 
Oh, most expensive gas of the trip is still half the price of European gas. Suckers. Okay, day two, Motor Merc Big Sur road trip. Today is the day that we leave civilization and head out on the actual twisty bit parts of Big Sur that the California coast is famous for. What the f You moron. I get it. You're not a moron, you're just forgetful. I apologize, sir. For calling you a moron on international YouTube vision. The cheapest motel that I could find along Big Sur was... Uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's this little place. Uh, it's called Relax Inn or something like that, and the rooms were like $70 a night. But it had like one star on Yelp. One star on Yelp. That's an absolute disaster. And everybody was complaining that you know, it was dirty, it smelled like smoke, the customer service wasn't very good, like the walls were caving in, the doors wouldn't close properly. It was barely, it's like barely a building at all. So I decided for $70, it, it's not worth it to, to spend the night in a, in a place like that. So uh, I looked into more expensive motels and the, the cheapest motel with a decent rating in the area was like $120, $130 a night, and I didn't want to spend $130 to shack one person up just for the night, you know, for like an eight-hour stay. So I looked into camping, and everything was reserved except this place, the San Simeon State Park. And I'm so glad I found it, because it was the last one with reservations open, and the reservations that I got were only $28, which is one quarter of the cost of what a motel, a decent motel would have cost me. Those guys are freaking troopers, man. Oh no, a dead raccoon! <laughs> 